This is an Octave Higher, a weekly expose of Jamaican musical talents from a unique angle. Some may even say the right angle. From the men and women who continue to compose, perform, and produce music we have become so attached to. An Octave Higher pays tribute to these musical heroes that you won't necessarily see behind a microphone or on the front page of an album cover, but you have been enjoying their talents and creativity over the years. Thanks for joining us as we delve into the mind and all a reason with another fine Jamaican musician. Welcome, welcome, welcome. it's time to take you an Octave an Higher. higher. for the interview now. <laughs> we, 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 yeah, we can just call it rap right now, right? <laughs> I really think I need to learn to dance. <laughs> Version 10. <laughs> I'm telling you. Welcome to another edition of An Octave Higher. I'm your host, Omar Trowers, and with me, the lovely, the beautiful, incomparable Dr. Kathy Brown, <laughs> judgment. Who would have thought that I'd have gotten this opportunity? Well, it's here, and uh, let me say welcome, Dr. Thank Brown. Thank you so Thanks much for having me. Thank you. I can call you Kathy. You can call me Kathy. All Kathy right. is fine. K I can call you K to the B. K to the B is fine. There's something else I have to tell you about it later on in the program. Whoa. <laughs> does it have an, any? Does it have anything to do with a? Uh, <clears throat> Particular piece of jewelry, is what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I love that story. You know, I have decided that it's it's it's. So now it's Catherine Brown Williams. All right. However, my stage name is still Kathy Brown. Yes, yeah, so. so big up Miss Williams, <laughs> straight off the bat. When I, yeah, big up herself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kathy, yes. how you doing? I'm fine. I'm good. Thanks uh, for agreeing to us, um, you know, having this conversation. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a real, real privilege for us here Thank at you. An Octave Higher. Thank you. I mean, for years, mm -hmm. we've, we've been hearing the name Dr. Kathy Brown. Um, you, you talk about a, a jazz uh, event, we're hearing Dr. Kathy Brown. You talk about some theater production, we're hearing Dr. Kathy Brown. A corporate function, we're hearing Dr. Kathy Brown. <laughs> You seem to be all over the place. Uh, <clears throat> not really. I could be some more all over the place. Yes. <laughs> but yes, it has been a journey. I have gone from one place to the other trying to spread my music and my interest, you know, and my Indeed. history. <laughs> yes. And obviously, it is something that you thoroughly enjoy. Oh, yes, I do. Um, you know, it's funny, but uh, it's one of those things that you enjoy so much that you can forget to eat, forget to sleep. Yeah. It consumes you that much. Until you stop playing and then you realize the birds are singing, it's almost morning. Or um, <laughs> you're really very hungry and you really should go and eat something. <laughs> yeah. So well, it, it, it must be interesting though, Kathy, mm -hmm. balancing music with your profession as, as a doctor. It is. Um, it has been a, that has been a journey by itself, but um, I have found a way to, to balance out the two and to be what I tell everybody, I'm a part-time doctor, and I'm not ashamed to say that. Yeah. So, I'm a part-time doctor. And so that allows time for- To do what you love. To do what I love. Now, I, I'm not sure you're trying to bait me on that <laughs> one, because for the record, when I'm seeing patients, I'm having just as good a time. When right. I'm actually helping a patient and speaking to them, especially when I'm helping them mentally. So each- it's, I feel the same. Each complements the know. other. Yes, it complements. Yes. Mm -hmm. Talk about the journey. Um, Kathy, you, you mentioned that you're one of those bright sparks. Uh, from, <laughs> from a very early age, you just found yourself with this affinity for the, the piano. You never had to be formally taught the piano. No, I didn't have to be formally taught. I, I went to the piano and um, I could hear very well. So I basically found a way to play what I could hear. My sisters were playing, my older sisters were playing by the time I came along. My father was playing. So whatever I heard them doing, I just went on the piano and found it. And eventually learned how to read, associating what's on the score with, yes. with what's on the piano. 
Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> we, we don't normally hear a, a, a lot of that okay. in terms of the beginning of, of the accomplished musicians in, in, in our generation. Right. I think, I, well, now the time in, I can look back in, in hindsight and say this, a lot of parents also take the initiative yes. to send the child at a young age saying, well, I want my child to play piano or something like that. Or the child shows interest, so they say, yes, yes, send her now, let her start from the beginning and get the best. But for me, I think because I'm child number four or five, I, I think I just gravitated to the piano. My parents weren't particularly going to jump up and say, let's send her quickly, until maybe they saw that I just kept going with it. Yeah. And then having trained the other two girls in proper lessons, they said, all right, it's time. But I think in my family, it wasn't a push, like you must do piano. It was, you want to do it? And then if you love it, go for it. If you love it, go for it. Um, and then you should probably do lessons, don't you think? You know, sort of way. Yeah. That, that's what came, that's what happened for me. Well, that has informed your approach mm -hmm. to life. Eh? Um, you basically go for the things <laughs> that you love. You, you're not pushed into anything. No, no. I, you know, I tell people I, I, love, I love breadfruit and planting and nobody has to push me. So, yeah. Same thing <laughs> for music. <laughs> Uh, especially Same right thing for music. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just went for it, you know? Yes. Yes, and it, there, was no, there was no discouragement. The only thing is that my father made sure he told me when I was a teenager <laughs> that um, music is not going to um, sustain you, so think of something else, <laughs> you know, in terms of formal studies. Yes. But aside from that, they didn't discourage me, they encouraged me. But little did he know that music would sustain you. In, in a significant yes, way. Yes, little did they know. Um, yes, yes, it has been a journey. You know, you, you think it's going to be performances only. Yeah. And then it becomes performances plus, oh, maybe you should do a recording. Yeah. So you start your album, you do your albums. There's some earnings from that. And then it becomes, um, oh, someone wanting to come and teach something, yeah. you know, and then next thing you know, you're, you're, you're a cultural a ambassador. Choir, right? <laughs> yeah. Or you're in charge of a choir or you're teaching people piano, individually. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So your passion, um, your joy, mm -hmm. has led you down many different paths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. today you can sit back and look at your life and say, I have no regrets. I, hmm, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say I have no regrets on what I've done. Yes. But there are some regrets in not doing certain things earlier in life. Ah, like the timing. Being, yes, I think that fear, and I, I tell everybody, I said, listen, fear is, a, is a, paral a paralyzing factor in many people's lives. And I think fear, just fear of not being able to support myself, maybe fear of not feeling supported, made me not do certain things, not reach out and leap and let's say, you know, go to Beijing and walk up and down and see what music I can learn. I'm just giving an example yes. um, because I'm afraid of how would I support myself, where would I stay, where would, you know, I wasn't sure if my parents would really support me financially. Pursuing your Pursuing passion. more, you know. So I said, I, I, I kind of held back on some things, you know, maybe. I wish I had maybe done more earlier. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. We're having mm -hmm. a conversation right now with mm -hmm. Dr. Kathy Brown. Williams. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to leave it up, Mr. Stage Williams. Name, like, <laughs> stage name. But, but stage name. Kathy Dr. Brown. Kathy Brown. All right. <laughs> Pick up yourself, Mr. Williams. Sorry, Kathy. But <laughs> it's okay. I'm fine. I'm very yes. fine. Uh, you, you, you set me loose in us. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. We, we, it's an octave higher. We're going to take a quick break. And, and when we come back, we're going to find out more about her, her journey into other areas of life and, and how all this music has affected her professional life and definitely her personal life. We'll be back <laughs> an octave higher. Do you have a product or service to advertise or do you wish to become a sponsor of this program an octave higher? Then please call the number on the screen 876-831-3042 or email an octave higher 79 at gmail.com. We look forward to partnering with you in developing this new reality TV concept and entertaining discussion program 
interspersed with spontaneous, delightful performances. Why you play? What you play? Sounds real good. An octave higher. <laughs> I, no, seriously, I really need to learn to dance, all right? Because I was tempted a while ago, I really was tempted to get up and try some, some like a samba looking thing, but then I'd embarrass myself on an octave higher, you know? I, I can't afford that. It's called having fun. <laughs> oh, right, I'm going to try it when we're going out. I'm going to try it when we're going out, all right, Kathy? Yes. All right, I'm going to try it. Hopefully I don't have two left foot, you know? Well, welcome back to an octave higher. It's me and the doc, Kate to the B, Kathy to the Brown, <laughs> and I'll tell you that apart when we're closing. <laughs> All right? Big up yourself. Big up yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kathy, mm -hmm. you, you said something in, mm -hmm. our, in our last segment, and I want, I want to zero in on that. You mentioned that you, you had the opportunity to be a cultural ambassador. A cultural ambassador? I'm going to say, bing, 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 light bulb. Where did it go? Where did it do? In 2012, I went to South Africa. Not once, but twice. That's exactly how I felt when I landed. That's exactly how I felt when I landed at Oratambo in the National Airport. Just like what you sang. That's how I felt. But the opportunity came because a friend who I had met through the South African High Commission yes. had invited me to South Africa on, a, on just a two-week trip, small little thing. And um, how I even met that friend is because I wrote a gospel song for the University Singers. Well, not for the University Singers, but, you know, that was my choir at the time. Yes. And I wrote this gospel song, I Will Lift Up My Nights. And it had a Afri South African feel to it. And I wanted Zulu words in there. Right. So I wanted the Zulu Bible. So I went to the South African High Commission and said I'd like a few words to say like thank you father and so on and so forth. And I met this young man. So he gave me the, the words I needed. Wrote the song, University Singer sang it, all went well. Then the fellow left Jamaica um, to be reposted as a diplomat um, elsewhere. But he said to me, when I'm going home to South Africa, I, mean, I want, that's the time to come. Yes. I can get you around, you can meet whoever, you know, what have you. And 2012, was the magic year. All right. Mm -hmm. So, so <coughs> 2012, he went back to, to South Africa. You, you took up the opportunity. Yes. You joined him. Yes. Uh, you landed in South Africa. And what happened after that? Well, I, uh, let me try and shorten it. <laughs> because just landing in the airport alone was an amazing experience. But um, it was great. By the time I landed there, I had alerted the Jamaican High Commission in South Africa that I'm coming. Yeah. So they alerted their Jamaicans who live in South Africa, you know, the ones that they know of. Yeah. So I was met at the airport by one of them and by my friend. So that was the great experience of just, just landing and getting out of the airport. Then um, he had arranged a little mini tour. So I was able to see a lot in the two weeks between history, you know, going to apartheid museum, the Nelson Mandela statue, just enjoying all the things you only heard about from a distance in Jamaica. Yes. I was able to actually see them and enjoy. The game parks, um, we made it to Cape Town, you know, and that is when I realized how big Africa is. Because South Africa alone, to get from Johannesburg to Cape Town, is two and a half hours flying. Flying? Yes. My so if it is word. two hours flying, it's about 13 hours by train and you're still in South Africa. Yeah. And South Southern Africa, if you look at the map, is a little thing at the tip like this, and you still have the rest of Africa. So use your imagination and imagine how huge this place is. It's colossal. And um, we went to Cape Town. I got introduced to some, um, like a jazz um, cafe, got to perform a little bit, um, promote my album, my CD. And then um, I was carried back to Johannesburg, to the Jamaican High Commission, met with them, you know, just introduced what's happening, what am I up to. And in all of that, um, I was, have to say, in ninth heaven, not seventh heaven, <laughs> uh, 
And at the end of the trip, as usual, I always say this is as usual, it's always the end of the trip that you finally meet someone who is going to take you to another level. And yeah. you know you have to go back to Jamaica the next day. Yeah. So I met this, this young man who was playing drums in a band in a, in a cafe in Johannesburg. And I introduced myself to him. And he said, oh, you're a musician. I could tell because you were looking at us and just listening the whole night. Everybody else is drinking and talking, but you were Focus. just staring. <laughs> I said, yes. He says, well, you know, I'm a talent agency as well. So if you give me your business card, maybe something can happen for you in South Africa. So we exchanged our information. So we'll keep in touch. And next day, off to Jamaica. Right? And I didn't expect it, but he kept in touch. And you ended up back in South Africa? And I ended up right back in South Africa six months later. Well, seven, yeah, six months later. Six months later. Because that 2012 was Jamaica 50. Yeah. South Africa had their own version. The, the Jamaican High Commission in South Africa were going to have their own version of Jamaica 50 celebrations. So when he invited me, it coincided it just in time with that. the same time of all this excitement. Boy, I'm so gonna tell you. as soon, I mean, that opportunity. Um, and he said to me, would you be willing to do any workshops? And that's when I said, oh, so this is more than just playing the piano. This is yes. going to be cultural ambassador, teaching people about Jamaican music and all of this thing. Indeed. And I felt it was important because I have to tell you that when I first landed in South Africa, I went to some of the stores shopping and picking up a few things. Persons looked at me and said, how come you're Jamaican and you don't have dreads? So the stereotype is already there. Yeah. You're not a Rasta. How come you're, how come? You know, and they want to know why not wearing certain things and, You're you know, right, and whatever it is, you know. And anything that I had on my hand that was black, green and gold at the time, any bangle or necklace, they want to take it off of me. That's how much they love Jamaica, right? Literally, they would see and say, oh, Jamaica, and they, they, their face light up, right? So I, I got myself ready for that second trip. I got information from um, the past Prime Minister, Eddie Siago. I got his his CD on Jamaican pop music. I spent time with Mr. Noel Dexter right on his veranda, getting little insights into music of Jamaica from the fields, to out of the fields, into Sky, into Rocksteady. And then I bought the um, Olive Lewin book, which is called Rocket Come Over. Nice book. And it has samples of music that has been used over the years that came from Africa to Jamaica, and we're using some of those words today and we don't even know what they mean. A word like Kalam Fondowa. Who knows what that really, really means, but that's Kalam and Lotion? No, it's not Kalam and Lotion. Not at all. <laughs> 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 but the point is I got myself ready to be a cultural ambassador. Yes. I, actually, I actually sat down on the flight, which by the way, um, from, from JFK, New York to Johannesburg is 15 hours flight. So get ready with your crossword puzzle, your book, your movies, which will be in the, on, the, on the flight, you know, your entertainment. Yes. You have to walk up and down on the plane to keep yourself g going, and you don't want any issues with circulation, so you keep, you get ready for that trip. Yeah. So on the plane, I found myself writing a lesson plan. It was hilarious. What am I going to teach them about Jamaica? How is it going to go? How am I going to <laughs> demonstrate? So I and all of this from the wealth of knowledge that you gathered. That I before. gathered from these teachers of music, these great teachers of music here in Jamaica who... I mean, bless them. They're really good. So I went there with knowing that I have to be cultural ambassador, um, performer, yes. pianist, yes. you know, that kind of thing, and <laughs> representing, oops, Jamaica. <laughs> because as soon as I reached, I think I was leaving the airport. And um, leaving the airport in New York, and a, a South African fellow look, just looked back and saw me with my passport in my hand, because you know, this, is, this is where you present your passport before climbing on the plane, so to speak. And he said, oh, Jamaica. And he looked at me like, oh, Jamaica, like it was so, oh. And I was like, hmm, this is an interesting reaction. I haven't even reached any. Yeah. <laughs> Eyebrows raised, everybody People getting excited. excited already. So when I landed the second time, um, I, was, I was already, I was ready, ready for this tour that this young man had now created for me. It was going to be a five-week tour, but it became six weeks. And um, six weeks because at the last minute I got invited to perform on a jazz festival, which out of nowhere, Kathy, if you stay for one more week, we can get you on a jazz festival where you'll have a huge audience. And I was like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and so it became a six-week um, tour. And once I landed, 
um, within one day, I had to get myself ready to go on television because he had not only arranged regular music performances and so on, he had arranged television interviews yes. and taking part in something that goes on in South Africa. They have a series called Big Brother, which is a reality series. Yes. And they decided that they're going to have Jamaica Night in their reality TV. And, and all of a sudden, Kathy, Kathy was now on reality, t on reality TV, Big Brother Africa, I think it's called, playing, jamming, and some Bob Marley for them to sing while they're having their cookout. This is reality TV show. Yes. So the persons are actually coming to the house, and they're, they're, they're surprised that there's a Jamaican party waiting for them, and they're all in spirits. And I, I had to just adapt, get going, do that, <laughs> you know? Listen, my man. <laughs> this is an octave higher with cultural <laughs> ambassador Dr. Kathy Brown. <laughs> Listen, uh, as a matter of fact, we can probably add reality TV star. Uh, uh, <laughs> it was just title. one uh, episode. Uh, you never know what tomorrow will bring. No, you see, from this thing hit the internet, <laughs> my mama tell you, no man, we're going to take a break. We'll soon come back. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a product or service to advertise? Or do you wish to become a sponsor of this program, an octave higher? Then please call the number on the screen, 876-831-3042 or email an octave higher 79 at gmail.com. forward to partnering with you in developing this new reality TV concept and entertaining discussion program interspersed with spontaneous delightful performances why you play what you play sounds real good an octave higher well, welcome back to an octave higher we're talking with dr. Kathy Brown the reality TV star the cultural ambassador, the <laughs> musical director, um, the writer. Listener, she, she has so many titles as it relates to music. Um, but there's one we're going to talk about a little bit later on. You know, it's a brand new title. Just, just give me a few minutes. Kathy, you, you've, you've impacted many lives, um, not just here in Jamaica, but obviously, as, with your stint as a cultural ambassador, you, you touch many lives outside the shores of this island. But let me take you back to your work locally. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit of the, the work that you've done and who you've worked with in terms of the groups that you've impacted along the way. Okay. Well, um, over the years, I slowly got involved with choirs and groups. It started off with me being invited to, to work with Kathy Levy yes. players at the time. So that was a, another theater experience, working with them and, you know, playing on time, on cue. Yes. According to what's on stage. And you got some training in high and school with I got that. some training in high school with that before. Yes. I had done a play with, at high school, at Manchester High School in Mandeville. And I had to play behind the actors as well, you know, get used to cues and stopping at the right time. And everything must be perfect because it's yes. a play. You can't just, you know, jam, <laughs> you know. And so I got used to that. After my experience with Kathy Levy's group, um, I, there were some offshoots from that. So there were some pop groups that said, oh, can you come and play for us at something? When I attended University of the West Indies, there was Irvin Hall Band. I was a part of that. Yes. So I started to join groups and play out more. Um, and then I eventually joined University Singers um, at Yubimona. And that choir proved to be um, my longest stint in terms of a choral stint. Yes. Since being a part of the University Singers, I've also worked with other choirs like the Jamaica Youth Chorale, the Mona Male Chorus, which is the newest one, Mona Campus Male Chorus, the Yui Mona Chorale, and some other choirs outside like the Citibank Choir and East Queen Street Baptist Church Choir. And in all the choirs, I have basically been asked to either accompany or teach the songs part yeah. by part, Get them, going on, get them going in terms of their stage presence and so on, and then play for them. So I've reached out like that. Tremendous experience, you think? Great experience, because all this time I had arrangements and compositions in my head. All right, so you got a chance to put So I got a chance <laughs> to arrange for choirs and compose for choirs. 
I even composed for actual voices. Like there was someone I met in University Singers one time, and when I was writing a song, I said, this song is for that voice. All right. And so, you know, even though it was, it's a choral song, can be done by any choir, but I had her voice in mind as the, as the lead, you know, when I wrote that song. So with all those compositions, <coughs> you have recorded. I have recorded. <laughs> and it is available. Well, uh, the choral compositions are not as prolific as they ought to be. In other words, we have done many performances, but in terms of being able to buy a, a, a recording of something I've done chorally with a choir, yeah. I can only speak for the University Singers, Lift Every Voice and Sing CD, which has on a, one of my original gospel songs, God is Our Refuge and Strength. So that for sure, if you buy the University Singers CD, you will hear my original choral piece. But in terms of my instrumental and jazz life now, finally in 2007, I recorded and finished my album All called right. Mission A Musical Journey. It was a journey <laughs> because it was my first album and when you do your first album I'm telling you all the mistakes, all the learning things, the learning curve, everything, all those things that they say are going to happen, happen. You learn your lessons, you know hard drives crash, mm. you record again, yeah. you learn your lessons and you get the artwork going, you find the right person, you get the, finally you get the things pressed and done and finally the product is out. And that was 2007. All right, I'm, I'm looking for a copy of that. That's available at Music Mart, Jamaica. Yeah. So, so we, we can have it here featured on an octave higher. I have to ask you mm -hmm. something though. I, I'm getting a little bit personal if you don't mind. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> your parents, they, they, they really laid the foundation for you to, to have a career in music and, and, and beyond. Um, they never expected you to be where you are at today when they started out. Agreed? No, they no. did not. <laughs> um, but but how, are they, how are they responding today you know, to well. your progress <laughs> in music? Well, I, I have to say that um, if they could hear me now, <laughs> and if they are hearing me now, God bless them, I think they would be happy. Unfortunately, they passed away in 2010, which is seven years ago. But seven years ago or eight years ago, when they were still here, I was performing a lot then. Yes. And um, they, I think they became, there was positive reinforcement because their own colleagues at university would tell them, I saw Kathy performing and it was great and fabulous. So they got some positive reinforcement and said, oh, this looks like something she, will, she can do. Because initially, when I was doing my music, I, they knew I loved it, but Focus they on the they felt that it was not going to put bread on the table, yeah. right? So they were like, she loves it, but she better she better have something else to back her up. And um, it seemed as if that's what needs to be done anyways in life. You have to use all your talents in order to survive and have a career, um, support yourself financially and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So because of that, I didn't feel like they were totally thinking that I'm really going to take it to that career level until they saw me doing it. Yeah. When they saw me performing, performing here and there, you know, contract signed, you know, traveling to perform, go on little tours, come back, get paid. They say, oh, okay, you know. It's so something serious. They were happy, yes. yes. But I think they were also happy that I did pursue that other thing, yes. <laughs> which is medicine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they are happy for that, so. And uh, here you are, seven years on. I'm sure you, you, you still miss them. Of course. Who does not miss their parents? Yes. I met somebody yesterday who told me that 20 years onwards, still crying every mm. now and then. 20 years, and I'm only seven years. I tell everybody that what it is, is that when somebody leaves you, whether in, through death or otherwise, it's not that you get over it, you get used to it. It's like raising a child. The yeah. child is now born and you, have to, you and the child have to get used to each other, right? Yeah. The child is not going to go away. <laughs> and so it's the same thing when you lose someone like that, it's like, I'm not, it's not going to stop. This grief is, this feeling of, oh, I miss my mom, it's not going away. Get used to it. <laughs> and and you, you now have another reason to smile. Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, because uh, Mr. Williams uh, took your heart and <laughs> he has you playing all kinds of and tunes. Some tunes. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> See, he, Mr. Oh Williams, boy. look at the smile. This is what you cause with the <laughs> Can't stop smiling. Anyway, yes. I will let you know. So I was, I'm recently married. I'm a young, in terms of young, a bride. So um, I was married in May of this year to Raymond Williams, my husband, yes. who is also a musician, and we inspire each other a lot musically. 
Amen. Yes, we do. <laughs> Thank you so very much, Mr. Williams, for allowing us the privilege of having this conversation with your bride. Yeah, man. Kathy, it, it, was, it was great being able to share with you. It was wonderful. Yes. It was wonderful. Maybe we can do a part two. We, we can. There's a lot of stuff that I haven't yet done. I, I believe we've only just <laughs> begun to scratch the surface. So I'm looking forward to the opportunity to share with you again, Kathy. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Bless Thanks you. for having me. <laughs> and thank you, friends, for tuning in for another episode of An Octave Higher. And I have to tell you, this beautiful backdrop is in the home of one of our, our, our interviewees. <laughs> yes, Joy Brown. Yes. So big up again, Joy Brown, you know, for allowing us this opportunity one more time. <laughs> Kathy. Blessings, my sister. Thank you.